What's it like working with Upstack Studio, my app development agency? Well, if I had to describe it in one word, it would be... No, it's impossible. There's just too much to talk about. That's why I made this video. Disclaimer, this video is a sales pitch. I run a business where we develop the best mobile apps, web apps, and actually just the two. But we're really good at it. If you're thinking of building a mobile or web app for your business, we got you. Those other developers, nothing, nothing. Nothing compared to the greatness that is Upstack Studio. Damn! Okay, might have taken that a bit too far there. But this is a sales pitch. I'm fully convinced that my team and I are incredibly well suited to help founders bring their idea to life, especially those without a technical background. We've been at it for the past five years and we've got a portfolio that I'm very proud of. So I would like to share with you what you can expect with Upsec Studio as your developer. I'm going to break down into three distinct parts. Pre-development, during development, post-development. So let's say you and I want to work together. What happens next? Pre-development at Upsec Studio. Goal, understand client vision and planning project scope. I need to start by sharing how we don't work at Upsec Studio. These are obviously fake, but I get real ones way too often. And I'll be honest, this is not a good way to begin your search for a good developer. What's wrong with them? Well, they barely tell us anything. Certainly not enough to give a decent price and time cost estimate. I could throw out a figure but it wouldn't be accurate. So even if a client says yes, and that yes is not grounded in reality, and when the real world sets in, the project likely crashes. And I will have a very angry founder on my hands. Instead, my team and I need to see, understand, and agree with your whole picture. That's when we can break it down and tell you what we think it will cost. First, we send you an app brief template to fill in and return. It's a simple document just to give us a baseline understanding of what you have in mind. Next, we invite you for a product mapping workshop. It's four to six hours long, and by the end of it, we will be best friends and completely exhausted. More importantly, we will have clarity on the following. The user demographic you're targeting, the most sensitive pain points, the most compelling value proposition we can offer, a desktop or mobile first solution, list of the most crucial features for for a minimum livable product and how much of those we can accomplish in the next four or six months. As developers, this tells us the scope of the project, which platform and what features, resources needed, staff seniority and the technology stack, total cost and time estimates, hourly rates and total hours. Some questions you might have. How much do you charge? We've always been transparent about this. Upstack Studios hourly rate is average of a Southeast Asian agency. We don't compete on price because we hire good talent to build your app. Look at the Avengers. Technically, they're all superheroes. But if Iron Man is the chief technology officer, commanding six figures, Hawkeye is more like an unpaid intern. It shows when you look at what they do. Iron Man builds rocket-powered exoskeletons with cutting-edge weaponry. Hawkeye shoots arrow in the world of guns. I know which Avenger I want on my team. We also ask for at least 30% upfront, and we invoice you every two weeks, a pay-as-you-go kind of deal, standard practice. Number two, what's a minimum livable product? It's the same as a minimum viable product, except we're moving past the bare minimum for a functional solution. We also want it to elicit a positive emotional response from users. With just a little bit more work, we can make your users genuinely enjoy using the solution even in its early stage. For more on minimum livable product, check out my MVP versus MLP video up here. Number three, why four to six months? In my experience, that's the longest that can be safely planned for. No real point going beyond that because things will come out that disrupt all the planning anyway. Number four, how big will my development team be? You'll be assigned at least one UI UX designer and full stack developer. Their seniority depends on how complex your project is. You also get one project manager to oversee everything. Most of the time, there'll be sweet loving angels. Hey, it's me, knock knock. So, uh, you got, uh, you got my money? But if they think a founder is making a bad decision or the development team can actually move much faster, they can be very persuasive. Mm, that's good, OJ. Ah! 
Ah! Yep. So let's say you're okay with all this and your first check doesn't bounce. Now, let's get to work. During development at Upsec Studio. Goal, iterate towards market-ready minimum livable product, MLP. The actual building will consist of these stages. Number one, UI UX design, four to six weeks. Number two, back and front-end development, 12 to 18 weeks. Number three, QA and testing, two to four weeks. Number four, launch, one to two weeks. Disclaimer, these are average ranges and will vary with each project. But I promise you, we're not going to take 10 years. If we have reached this stage, it means you've agreed to our preferred methodology and approach. Agile and Scrum. Here's what that looks like in practice. Step zero, the project is divided into blocks of time called sprints, each lasting two weeks. Step one, we meet with you before a sprint to discuss action items. Step two, we align on what needs to be done within the coming two weeks. Step three, we adjourn to build the product while you build your founderly thing. Step four, we regroup at the end of two weeks for a progress update and plan the next sprint. Step five, repeat until launch. In between sprints, feel free to raise urgent matters, but otherwise, treat no news as good news. You don't want to get on your project manager's bad side. <laughs> Now, I say our methodology, but obviously, we didn't invent Agile. It's used across many industries whenever people are trying to introduce a new solution, but they're not sure what the market specifically wants. That's the situation most founders are in, whether they realize it or not. So what we do is to create a prototype to test on users and iterate your idea bit by bit. Those meetings in between sprints, that's where we decide what changes to implement. That's why we want you involved in the decision making. It's your idea. Speaking of meetings, Upstackers work fully remote. So we use communication tools to align internally and with the clients. We personally use ClickUp to manage our projects, Google Meet for meetings, Slack for real-time communications, Figma for visual brainstorming and to show designs, mockups, wireframes, etc. After X number of sprints, your app is ready for launch. We also help our clients with the App Store submission process. Since we've done it so many times, it's like going on autopilot. Post-development at AppStack Studio. Goal, iterate new versions of app, solving bugs and installing patches as needed. Now, we start iterating in earnest. User reviews will start coming in. Our job will be to follow through with complaints and suggestions and address legitimate issues. You keep the core team and meeting frequencies stays the same it's just that our goalposts have shifted. Solving the inevitable bugs will top our list of priorities and after that, it becomes all about maintenance. Around this time, you can start looking for an in-house developer. Over time, we help you to transition to this in-house team, which can be much smaller. We always build apps with continuity in mind. If for some reason, every upstacker died on the same day, you will have all the files and design elements you need to just hire another developer to take over where we left off. And that's the AppSec Studio experience. On average, it takes about four to six months and 30 to $70,000. Why trust AppSec Studio? Everything I've just explained is to show you that AppSec Studio has a process. We're structured in how we approach app development. I am it. That applies to lots of agencies. Here's where I think we stand out from the pack. Number one, we don't pretend to know what we don't. This applies to tech stacks, to project types, to anything really. Number two, we stay in our lane. Sometimes we're just not a good fit for our founders' needs, and I have no problem telling people that. Number three, if we say yes to a project, we are very comfortable being firm with founders about what we believe is the best way forward for their best interest. Number four, I hope you guys can see that my team and I, we think smart, act stupid. We don't take ourselves too seriously, but we take the work very seriously. Those have always been my favorite kind of teachers. They know their stuff and they don't rub it in your face. I'm not trying to be kind or charitable by saying no to money. I love money. No, no, you don't understand. I love money. Like I said at the start of the video, this is a sales pitch. It's just that in the long run, nothing sells like competence, politeness, and transparency. So that's what we sell. Competent, polite, and transparent app development. When you hire Upstack Studio, that's what you're buying. And for non-tech founders, I really think that's something you can't put a price on. But we can, you'll find out in the invoice. In the description, you'll find a couple of links. The first one is to our app brief template, which is how we gather 
preliminary information, fill it up and send it my way. The second one is for a free strategy session with me or maybe one of my team members. Ask me all the questions you have on app development, but be ready for me to ask some of my own. There's a third thing and it's not really a link. Let me see where it is. Ah, there we go. See that red button that says subscribe? Could you go ahead and click on it for me? I've got lots of awesome content planned. Please help me get it out there. Take care guys.